Coming up, I have three Tascam DAP1 portable DAT decks. One I saw before and two are new ones coming in for repair, all from the same person. So we'll check them out and see how they are. Got a Tascam DAP1. This is one that I saw before that we put an external power supply on. The power supply was uh, missing. It didn't have a power supply, so I put on a, a 7.5 volt adapter. And apparently this one's got a problem, so I told the fellow that owns this, I will take a look at it for him. See what uh, is ailing this one this time. First thing I want to do is I want to inspect, make sure that nothing has fallen loose on it or fallen out. And uh, then we'll just proceed to, to loader tape and see what it's doing. Apparently it has a transport issue. And I'll plug it into my amplifier. Now I've just plugged this in. I haven't done anything as you saw. This is how it arrived to me. Let's see what it's doing. So that's the tape playing. Apparently this has a transport issue, so I'm going to have to monitor this one, I guess, for a bit. Let's see, does it fast forward? It fast forwards. I guess the end of the tape there. Yeah, that's the end of the tape. This appears to be working. These machines queue up when they get to the end of the tape. Like when you, if you fast forward, when it gets to the end of the recording, it will stop and it will queue itself back to the end of the recording and then wait see and there it is it sits and waits that's what these ones do that's what they're supposed to do but this one apparently has a transport problem so this is going to be a fun one Well, so far I don't see anything wrong with this one. I'm looking to see if any of the little clips fell off and all the little clips appear to be in place. And I'm just looking to see if any of the cut washers popped out on it, but they're all there. I remember putting the brake pads back on one of these ones. I've, I've had a few of these units. I've had two of these that I put power adapters on. And I don't see anything wrong here. This is all looking good. I don't see anything that's popped apart. A common fault on these uh, these DAP ones is there's a a plastic post or, or plastic housing that cracks and allows the pin to pull out down here, right down in here and this is what we repair on them is we we glue this back onto this the shaft here but you see it's not moving it's it's in place this pin slides down and causes this pendulum gear to stop moving but that hasn't happened everything's still in good position on here so i don't know 
what's happening as far as the transport on this one. I guess what I'm going to have to do is I'm just going to have to put some tapes in this and just let it run because uh, it's working. So this one, I'm going to put a tape in it and let this one run while I work on another one. As this one appears to be, at, the, at this point in time, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't know what was going on when it was uh, back at the client's place, but um, it certainly is not faulting right now, that's for sure. So I'll put on one of my damaged tapes. This, one, this tape's got a crease at the beginning, so I don't use it anymore, other than for testing. And of course it went through that tape end to end. No problem. Another tape. This one's a Fuji. We're going to let this tape play. So, can't let this play, obviously. But uh, I'm going to let this one play for a while and see what's happening with it. And I may have to run this thing for many, many hours if it's gone intermittent. But uh, upon inspection, it seems to be working just fine. Here's another Tascam uh, DAP1 that was shipped in. It's another one of these ones that's ugly. Ugly, ugly, ugly. The uh, rubberized coating is uh, sticky on them. I got, actually got... Uh, Three sent to me. This is number three because number two is uh, one that I worked on and it's it's working. So uh, we're just testing it. This one says this is a deck that the uh, owner of it he opened it up to replace a belt but was never able to access it. So I guess it needs a belt replacement. We'll see what else is wrong. And I've got another one that uh, we'll probably be looking at it in a separate video that uh, was an eBay purchase. As he, as he put it, it's, um, he says, this is unquestionably eBay's champion. He says, the problem is not necessarily a complete list. Power switch is stuck. Loading belt, bad. Screws are messed up and misplaced. Two just fell out. And he's put them in a Ziploc bag. He says the space under the oper the space under the operate charge switch needs to be closed. Don't know what was there originally. He says I won't bother with this, but he got it for virtually for free. So maybe we can get that one going. But this one here apparently needs a belt change. So um no, oh, there's a screw that's here. I guess he tried to do this one himself and took some screws out. So let's uh let's do this one. Let's see how quick I can change the belt on this unit. Since I've done so many of these DAP1s, I'm getting pretty good at uh, what goes wrong with them. So we'll open up the battery compartment, remove the screws, Some of these screws are long screws and some of them are short screws, so you have to kind of remember which ones go where because if you put a long screw where there's supposed to be a short screw, it's going to cause problems. See, this is a shorter screw. There's a long screw over there that was also in there. This one here should be a short screw, which is missing. So this should be another short screw here. That's a long screw. This one also is a long screw. sure seeing a lot of these DAP1s. There must have been a lot of them out there because it's certainly been one of the more popular DAP decks that I've been seeing lately. And I don't mind working on these ones because they're a little bit larger than, say, some of the Sonys. So they're a lot easier to work on. This is like 
more like working on a full-size home deck but smaller they use basically the same transport that the full-size studio decks used of course I need a longer screwdriver for that one will this one reach it that one won't even uh oh I may have created a monster here um, Let's just see whether I can reach it with this one. Yes, I can reach it with this one. All right. screw should be hooked right now. I can pop the bottom off. Oh, one more in the back here. Okay, bottom comes off. Get rid of that screw. This one needs a belt replaced. Belt is, of course, right down here. Now, this is one way of replacing the belts. Is I can slip the belt on here right from, right from the back here. Okay. That's usually one of the ways I do it because if the belt is slipping, then a lot of times you can't open up the cassette compartment. The other way, of course, is to, to remove the cassette, uh, the entire transport. But I find it's usually just as easy if we just pop out a few of the screws here on the circuit board and uh, then we can just lift the board up enough that we can get the uh, belt over the pulley. So there's no right or wrong way. You can do it either way. You can pull the mechanism out. It's just that I just find that it's not really necessary because the belt is right here. All we need to do is just to loop it out with our dental pick. Remove that. And there is the belt. I can loop this thing out just like that, lift it out, and get the new belt in place. So I've got another belt here. These belts, that these, the, the, the customer supplied these for me. They are, I believe, uh, they're dental bands is what they are. They're like a rubber dental band that would be used with braces. Just a tiny, this is it here. Okay, just a tiny little band, little rubber band. But they're just the right size to put on for these belts. So I can just loop it in place with my dental pick, like that. Around the pulley. Now I'll grab it and pull it over the front. Just like that. And that's how to replace the belt very quickly while taking out minimal screws on one of these Tascam DAP1s. I'll just go grab my power adapter and we'll check this one out momentarily. That was that one I took out. All right, I can power this one up now. See if it'll play. Now line out.
Okay, we're going to do an inspection and see if there's anything missing in here. Uh, everything looks to be good. And so I have the transport on this one. So let's load a tape. And see if it will play. Uh, this tape's got some damage at the beginning of it here, so... There we go. This one's fixed up, just needed a belt. There we go. Rewind. Fast forward. Play. All right, this one is uh, one down, two to go. Well, one to go. One is uh, just under test right now. It's the one I started the video with that is uh, still playing. It's been playing for a oh, so It's the second pass of the tape now, but it, it is it is playing. That's this one here. Can't let that play, obviously. But it appears to be working just fine. So I don't know what the problem he was having on his end was with it, but uh, it's working here. So we'll just let that one continue to play. I'll get the screws back in this one and uh, then we can get on to the third one. The one that came from eBay that was uh, apparently all in pieces. So we'll find out how bad that one is once I get on it, which will be as soon as I get this one put together. One thing I should note when putting these together, you can always tell the long screws because they'll go down further in the cabinet. The short screws, they start to thread in immediately. So it's always good to test it with a long screw first. If it feels like it's going to go down into the chassis like that, then we know that that's a long screw. Because if you put a short screw in where a long screw is supposed to be, um, you'll drop the screw down and then you won't be able to get it. You'll have to use a magnet or something to retrieve the screw. And there we go, one last test. Let's search for the next track. LED light on here, that kind of amber. You got it, it really only you only see it in the dark. Anyway, there it is. To put this into perspective, there's my Sony TCD V3. This is not the smallest Walkman, um, that Walkman that was made, but it was one of the smaller ones. This was actually the very first digital audio tape Walkman. This is it. This is mine. As you can see, mine's in pretty good condition. I scratched some ID numbers in the bottom for identification. But uh, other than that, the only thing that's wrong with mine is the the electroluminescent display panel doesn't light up like the green glow I think it's the power inverter for it but other than that that's mine about as good a specimen I think as you're gonna find as far as cosmetics go it's really in pretty good shape anyway None of that ugly rubberized coating that goes bad like on these ones. I like these units and I've got one. But uh, I sure don't like that coating they put on it, that's for sure. Okay, this is the eBay purchase. This one says, Power slide switch is stuck. Possibly be, be <laughs> held by the wrong screw. Um, loading belt is the suspect. Screws messed up and misplaced. Two just fell out. 
now in a Ziploc plastic bag. He gave me a bag with the screws in it that fell out and a spare belt. So I guess uh, we're going into this one blind. See what's wrong with it. And of course it's stuck to the bag because rubber coating on these just a joke. All right, so let's evaluate this one and just see what is uh, what's wrong with it besides the fact that the power switch doesn't work. Probably because someone put it together wrong. But let's uh, let's open it up and see what is wrong with this one. Screws fell out. Oh yes. So let's open the top of this one up first. Got to do that to investigate the switch. It looks like it's just been put together wrong. And it's trapped. A screw missing over here. Probably one of the screws in the bag. I'll find that out when I get to it. This screw here is not in properly. And there's two screws in the back that are missing. Those might be in the bag here as well. Let's just see what is in the bag. Two long screws, and a short screw, and a belt. Okay, top cover should lift off. The problem is a lot of times these top covers won't lift off if the tape compartment is closed because it overlaps it a bit. So we need to remove the bottom as well. Is that where a long screw went or a short? That's a short screw there. There should be a long screw here. See these screws are all loose. Long screw. Long screw. There should be two more in here, which there is. This cover was never put on properly. This was a relatively popular recorder in the um, in the music business. There was a lot of these ones, I think, used in um, field production, like for uh, motion picture sound and uh, field recording, because they offered, of course, the XLR inputs as well as digital inputs. And uh, a unit like this, you could disable the serial copy management. Just see if I can lift this up a bit and slide this control over where it belongs. Because I think it's just trapped. Unfortunately I can't. I gotta get the I gotta get the door open before I can uh, get the top off. I have to lift this I have to lift off the lid. I might be able to 
have to lift up the lid a bit on the side here and might be able to pull it forward enough to pop it out. If I can lift it up enough here that I can push it forward, it should pop off. Now I can lift the top off to fix the switch. Oh, wait a minute, there's probably still a screw at the bottom. There is a screw in here. What the heck did someone do? They put the wrong screws in. That's why. Long screws go down through the bottom cover. They've put two short screws in there. Well, they put long screws in, they just didn't have the cover on. Oh, I see what they've done. They actually broke the bottom. They broke the plastic. Someone uh, pulled the bottom off it without removing the the screws. That was real brilliant of them, wasn't it? There, now the power switch is fixed. See, it was just, they put it on with the power switch in the wrong position. All right, now that we've got this machine apart, let's power it up and see what it does and doesn't do. Somewhere here I've got a power adapter. Put this thing in operate mode. Yeah, sounds like the belt is missing. So I have two choices. I can either A, remove the deck, or just do it from the bottom like I did before. This time, because I've got the top off it, I'll remove the deck, just so you guys can see how it's done from the top side. Uh, it's six of one and half a dozen of the other. But if I want to do it from the top side, I just have to remove some screws to hold the, the uh, tape transport in. Okay, now the tape transport will lift out. We do need to unplug it from the bottom here. So we'll remove that. And just undo the four plugs. This is why I say it's easier to change these belts from the bottom. You don't have to remove the tape transport. I'm just doing it to show how it's done if you want to go down that road and do it this way. Uh, you certainly can, but it's easier just to fish the belt in place without having to take this apart like I did on the last one. So once we've removed the four plugs and I got to remove another one over here and I think there's one more that I got to undo over on the other side and the deck will just lift up but I don't even have to get that far I can just lift it up like this to change the the belt. The belt on this one is turned to mush we'll just pick the old yuck belt that's turned to liquid <laughs> we're gonna have to clean this up i gotta pull the mechanism out completely because i gotta get what remains of that belt out of here so we'll just uh, undo the other couple of connectors that need to be undone we've got the four from the from the main board undone here and then there's two more three more over here so we'll undo these ones this last one here Okay, now here is the mechanism. As you can see, the remnants of the old belt is still on the pulley here, so we need to clear that out. I'm just going to get a screwdriver to kind of peel it out of here. 
and we'll have to clean it off with um, some probably I might not have to use isopropyl it's, it's come off it's actually come off quite quite effectively here there's not much left not much of a residue left at all actually came off in chunks it's a little bit left right here you can just pick that out and uh, the remainder of it I can just probably get rid of with a q-tip soaked in alcohol so let's grab a q-tip soak it in alcohol and use that to clean what remains of the old belt out of the pulley at least when they're a small belt like this they don't leave a lot of mess behind that's for sure not like some of the longer belts that melt and leave a residue behind that takes you half a day to clean up there we go I think I got it all all right new belt belt is in place as you can see there's no residue left behind and this is the only belt that ever really goes bad on these these transports were actually pretty good there's the tooth belt for the real drive uh, some of the common problems that happened on this mechanism is the the little gear down here this little wheel tends to crack and when that happens it can allow the little pin here to pop out and this one here has cracked we can see it I zoom the camera in you'll see what I'm talking about get some light on the spot here you can see what I'm pointing at right down there it's a little crack you can see it get the camera in a little bit closer maybe okay now you see the crack I'm sure you can see it there. You can see that one from a thousand yards. So this cracks and it allows the spring to eventually push this pin through. So what we need to do is we need to put some glue on here so that this will not slip and allow the mechanism to lose the um, torque to the take up and supply. Then they kind of chew up tapes and don't fast forward and don't rewind and generally don't work that well. So let's get some glue and we'll glue that piece to prevent it from failing. It's a failure that happens on a lot of these BAP ones. I've seen it happen on a bunch. It happened on the one that was given to me. In fact, that's what was wrong with it when it was given to me was the same problem. This is just super glue that I'm using on here. It's the gel type of super glue, so it's not the the really runny stuff, but it it dries up the same. So we just want to get it fill that crack with the glue so that it will bond with the metal pin and bond it in place okay we'll let that set up for a bit before putting this unit back together if you guys are wondering what this mechanism is made of this is a composite material 
these guides are tight on here, which is good. It's not plastic. It's a well, it's a composite. I don't know whether they've made it out of carbon fiber or something. It's uh, supposed to not warp or crack like plastic would. And these mechanisms were considered to be pretty good. I have a I have two TAC, which is this is a TAC. It's a Tascam, so Tascam and TAC are the same. But I have two TAC uh, TAB a uh, TAP or DAP twenties, which are very similar, but the mechanism on them is metal. This one here is this composite material. So these ones don't need lubrication. The metal ones, they have grease on them. But these ones you'll see are dry. And the reason for that is, well, they say that they don't need lubrication. Being a composite material. It doesn't stick to each other. It's like Teflon. Um, anyway, that's that's what they're saying. But it's, it's not like plastic or nylon that shrinks and cracks. These are supposedly never going to break. And, well, these machines are all pretty old now, and I've yet to see one or there's been a problem with the transport on them. Now, of course the advantage of not requiring lubrication, not requiring grease on the rails is that grease attracts dust and dirt and these machines were used out in the field as field recorders under all kinds of conditions so the last thing you want to have happen is have some lubricant that's going to attract dirt and dust and debris and get it inside your mechanism. That's from what I understand was the reason that they did what they did. Just to keep the unit itself clean. See the heads on here? There's the recording head right there. You can see the one head and the other head over here. And no, I'm not touching it. I'm touching the actual disc, but I'm not touching the head. There's the recording heads. This drum rotates at 2,000 RPM. Or 1,000 if you've got it in the long play speed, but I don't think this one has long play. I'm just giving that glue a chance to set up. It's probably set up by now, so let's put the machine back together and test it out. And then I can get this one on its way back down where it's going, which is going back down to uh, Texas. the three plugs back in and then there's the connector for the preamp it goes out on this side Drop the transport in and fish the wires down below.
I seem to be having my trouble. Aren't I? I can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Just the angle that I'm sitting. I'm not looking straight down at it like the camera is, so I, I can't see where the the hole is unless I tilt the unit up a bit. There we go. Got those four screws in for the mechanism. And I will plug in the plugs on the back here. Nice thing about this is the plugs are all keyed, so they only go in one place. They're all specific sizes. So you don't have to worry about messing up which plugs go where because they really only go in one place. And they only go in one direction as well, so you can't put them in backwards. You'll find that the, the little pins here and the holes are offset from center. So they only can plug in one way. If you try to plug them in the other way, nothing's going to happen. I guess if you force it, you'll bend the pins off, but uh, generally, if you're careful, that's not going to happen. Just pop it, just to line it up and pop it in place like that. Next one here, you can see this is where that belt shredded and got all over the uh, over the wires. Now these machines do have surface mounted caps on them. I haven't run into too many of them that have been a problem on these task cams. I'm not saying that they can't fail, I just I haven't seen them. I think there was a there was a couple different manufacturers that manufactured these surface mounted caps and some of them were worse than others. Like the ones that Sony ended up with were horrible. I haven't had any on, on these machines touch wood yet. I'm sure that they're they're probably getting weak on some of them, but uh, they haven't gotten to the point yet where I've had any of the decks that I've seen that have been had performance problems due to the caps being bad. All right, let's try this machine out now and see if it works. If you get in the operate position, it turns on, it opens, plug in the audio. Dig up my tape. Play. Let's see if it'll search. Back a track. That's weird. It's like what? What? It's not playing. I guess there was just nothing on the tape where I was where I started playing it. Because it's working now. So it looks like I got another one fixed. Putting this one back together. Another screw that goes in over here. I should just have that one screw left over that uh, won't go into anything because the the cover is broken. Okay, I think I got them all. And of course, that one because there's nothing to screw it into. I think we've got it.
top cover goes back on. Like that. And the power switch shuts it off. Okay, we're done. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Before I go, let's just plug back into that other one that's been under test run for the entire time that I've been working on these. I say that this one he said it had a transport issue, but it is oh it's rewound. It's the tape finished. And it's rewound back to the beginning again. It's only a one hour tape. So as you can see it's working. I'm going to continue to test her on this one. We'll test her on this one now for, I'm going to test run it for another day or so. See if I can get it to fault. Contact the guy that owns it. Ask him what he means by it uh, has a transport issue. Well, I don't see any issue with the transport. It seems to be working properly here. Not eating tapes. So I don't know what his uh, transport issue is, or his problem with this one is, but it appears to be working. Anyway, that's uh, two of three. This one was kind of a freebie because I worked on it before. I told him I would look at it and see if I could see what it's doing, but it's not doing anything. So two out of three, I guess we're okay. We'll uh, catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.